My name is Ryan Anger. I'm the program manager for Bell's V280 Valor program. So what you see here behind me is a mock-up of the V280 Valor. What you see on the screen uh, above you is a video from our flight test, our 135 hours of flight test of the aircraft. So what we set out to do is create an aircraft that would have twice the speed, twice the range uh, of today's existing Black Hawk platform, uh, as well as have 6K95 capability and have level one handling qualities and agility. And so what we've proven out in partnership with the Army, we started this effort in 2013, the joint multi-role tech demonstrator effort. So in partnership with the Army, uh, Army XP is embedded in our team, Army engineers, et cetera, we've been developing this aircraft to prove out all those key performance parameters that Bell established to get the high speed, the long range, and the great uh, agility. Our focus is on an assault aircraft, but we can look at uh, employing common launch tubes, we can look at weaponizing the aircraft. It makes a great uh, medevac platform because of its speed and range capability. And if you walk around the booth, you can see some of the other stations where we look at sustainment of the aircraft as well. So it's not about just fielding an incredible capability, it's after you field it, how do you sustain the aircraft? So we put a lot of focus on the sustainment piece of the aircraft and the affordability as well for not just recurring cost of the aircraft, but for the sustainment cycle uh, in addition. So the main advantage of the tilt rotor configuration, uh, it's a very successful platform as evidenced by the V-22 and its success, but essentially the wing gives you the ability to go fast and to have great efficiency in doing so, which gives you the range. Um, this aircraft took the best of what we learned from the 500,000 flight hours of the V-22 and rolled it into an aircraft that's sized um, and configured for the Army assault mission. So when you look at the, uh, at the nacelles, you've got engines uh, approximately 50 feet apart. You've got nothing above the cabin in terms of engines and gearboxes and, and things of that nature. So uh, very survivable uh, in a crash situation. The aircraft is designed for single engine operation, so if you do lose an engine, you've got a drive shaft that connects and links both of the rotors. You can continue to fly safely, and you can continue to fly very quickly um, back, to, uh, back to base. Um, the unique thing about this aircraft relative to V-22 is the engine is non-rotating. So we fixed the engine, we, we're going to have an IR suppressor, we're going to have an inlet barrier filter, and we've really increased the maintainability of that entire nacelle and the affordability of operating this aircraft. We're about six years into the joint multi-role technology demonstrator program. That's drawing to a close. We've got over 135 flight hours on the aircraft. We've got over 250 operational hours. Uh, we've spent a lot of time developing and ringing out all the systems and subsystems, taking them through rigorous testing to make sure we've got the technology to maturity level that we can enter into a program of record with relatively low risk. From a capacity standpoint, it's designed for 12 fully loaded uh, troops in the back. Uh, for a speed standpoint, 280 knots was our initial design point. The aircraft we've demonstrated over 300 knots of speed capability. So one of the things we designed into the V-280 for that Army assault mission was the six foot wide sliding cabin door. So we recognize that it's incredibly important to be able to ingress and egress out of the aircraft as quickly as possible. So we have a fully reconfigurable interior, um, but the six foot wide sliding side door also gives you capability to have uh, do an effective hoist operations out the side. And what you can see here is, uh, is an option for a hoist. On the other side, we're demonstrating the capability to do fast rope. So we are firm believers in the Army's modernization priorities, and we've worked very hard with the Army, and we've been successful in reducing risk for the future long-range assault aircraft, and we're ready to deliver first unit equipped by 2030.